In this video, we will discuss the presidency of John F. Kennedy. Born into a wealthy Catholic family in Massachusetts, Kennedy served in World War II before being elected into first the House of Representatives and later the Senate. The young and inexperienced president would have to deal with high Cold War tensions as well as civil rights issues before being assassinated in his third year in office. The 1960 presidential election pitted two knowledgeable and articulate candidates who had similar views on policy against each other. Richard Nixon was a sitting Republican vice president under Eisenhower. John F. Kennedy was a Democratic senator from Massachusetts. JFK had two things going against him, his youth and the fact that he was Catholic. Americans feared that the Pope would influence his decisions as president. JFK won for two reasons. The first was television. Nixon agreed to debate JFK on TV. It was the first presidential debate on TV ever. 70 million Americans watched. Nixon was an expert on foreign policy and hoped to expose JFK's inexperience. JFK was coached by TV producers and looked and spoke better than Nixon. The people who watched the debate on TV thought JFK won, but the people who listened to the debate on radio thought Nixon won. The second reason JFK won was civil rights. The Atlanta police arrested Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. and 33 others for having a sit-in at a segregated lunch counter. The others were released, but MLK was sentenced to hard labor. President Eisenhower and Nixon took no public position. JFK's brother, Robert Kennedy, convinced the judge to let MLK out on bail. This helped JFK win African-American votes in the Midwest and the South. JFK's broad vision for progress for our country was called the New Frontier. It was a mixed bag of successes and failures. He had a hard time getting Congress to pass his legislation since he lacked a clear mandate from the presidential election. Young Americans heard his inauguration speech and were inspired to join the Peace Corps. It was a volunteer program to help the developing nations in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Volunteers help any way they can. They farm, teach, or help with health issues. It was so successful, by 1968, more than 35,000 volunteers had served in 60 countries around the world. The second program is the Alliance for Progress. It provided economic and technical assistance to Latin American countries. We were afraid we would have another Cuba on our hands. While we spent nearly $12 billion in the region, the program was not that successful. The third element of the new frontier had to do with space. The Soviets had the first satellite, Sputnik, and the first cosmonaut, Yuri Gagarin, in space. JFK knew that if we wanted to keep up with the Soviet Union in science and technology, we had to pass them. In this now famous speech given at Rice University, he challenged the nation to do what no one thought was possible, land on the moon. Seven years later, on July 20th, 1969, we did just that. Universities expanded their science programs. There was huge federal funding for research and development, which gave rise to new industries and new technologies. Space and defense-related industries sprang up in southern and western states. NASA had inspired a generation. Unfortunately, JFK would not live long enough to see his challenges fulfilled. JFK created a new military policy to adjust to developing Cold War conflicts. It was called our Flexible Response. JFK wanted to broaden the range of military options by strengthening and modernizing the military's ability to fight a non-nuclear war. To do this, he spent more money on troops, ships and artillery, and created a new branch of the Army called Special Forces, or Green Beret. They would be sent into hotspots anywhere around the world in a short amount of time. JFK also had to end the miss missile gap that we had with the Soviet Union by expanding our nuclear arsenal to catch up with them. To do that, he tri tripled our nuclear capability. Eisenhower gave the CIA permission to train Cuban exiles to overthrow communist leader Fidel Castro. JFK learned about the plan nine days after his election. He went ahead and approved it. Everything that could go wrong did. On April 17, 1961, 1,500 Cuban exiles supported by the U.S. military were captured by 25,000 Cuban-backed tanks and aircraft. JFK was so embarrassed and lost faith in the Pentagon and the CIA. After the Bay of Pigs, Soviet Union Premier Nikita Khrushchev supplied Cuba with weapons, including nuclear missiles that could reach the USA within minutes. An American U-2 spy plane took photos as proof. JFK told the nation about the missiles and his plan to remove them. He ordered the U.S. Navy to quarantine or blockade the island of Cuba. Any Soviet ship crossing the blockade would be an act of war. He also warned the Soviet Union that any missile attack from Cuba would also trigger an all-out attack on the Soviet Union. This policy was known as mass retaliation. Soviet leader Khrushchev backs down and removes the missiles, 
with Kennedy's promise to never invade Cuba. The U.S. also removed nuclear missiles from Turkey aimed at the Soviet Union. This is the closest we got to World War III. Berlin is the divided capital city of East Germany. In the 11 years since the Berlin airlift, 3 million East Germans, 20% of the country's population, had fled to West Berlin to escape communism. JFK refused to limit U.S. access to West Berlin. Just after midnight on August 13, 1961, Soviet leader Khrushchev erected a Berlin Wall to stop the flow of East Germans from fleeing the country. It took a few days to build. In 1963, JFK went to West Berlin and showed our commitment to keeping West Berlin free and made the argument against communism. Here are some stats on the Berlin Wall. The wall and other barriers are 10 to 15 feet high. They surround West Berlin. It's 110 miles long. There are guard dogs and machine guns discouraging most people from crossing illegally. The death strip stretched like a barren moat around West Berlin with patrols, floodlights, electric fences, and vehicle traps between the inner and outer walls. During its 28 years of existence, 5,000 people succeeded in fleeing, while almost 200 people died trying to escape. The wall was brought down in 1989 and signaled the end of the Soviet Union. Both JFK and Khrushchev realized the need to communicate with each other during times of crisis, so they established a dedicated phone line between Washington and Moscow. It was called the Hotline. They both agreed also to the Limited Test Ban Treaty, which banned nuclear testing in the atmosphere. After the division of Vietnam in 1954, the U.S. flooded the DM government of South Vietnam with financial aid, but the corrupt right-wing government wasted it. Anti-DM protesters threatened to overthrow his government. Wanting to unify the South with communist North Vietnam, a South Vietnamese rebel group known as the Viet Cong were supported financially and militarily by Ho Chi Minh. The U.S. sent in military advisors to provide political stability and eventually the Green Berets to protect DM from communists long enough for him to enact social reforms, which he failed to do. In 1961, JFK ordered a sharp increase in U.S. military advisors. By November of 1963, the Kennedy administration could no longer support Diem. They backed a coup that ended in Diem's assassination that month. Trying to create a stable South Vietnam, the U.S. policies actually contributed greatly to the disintegration of their government. By the time of JFK's own assassination later that month, U.S. forces in South Vietnam numbered 15,000. Support for MLK's March on Washington in August of 1963 made Southern whites unhappy with JFK. His vice president, Lyndon B. Johnson, was from Texas. He convinced JFK to come to Texas to improve his relationship with members of the Texas Democratic Party. JFK was greeted in Dallas with warm waves of applause. His motorcade had just turned on a corner in front of the Texas School Book Depository in downtown Dallas. Lee Harvey Oswald shot JFK with a high-powered rifle. He fired only three bullets. The first bullet missed. Another bullet hit JFK in the back and injured Governor Connolly. The last bullet hit Kennedy in the back of the head, fatally wounding him. Lee Harvey Oswald's fingerprints were found on the rifle that was used to kill JFK. After a brief search, police found Oswald hiding in a movie theater. The world watched a couple days later as Lee Harvey Oswald was being escorted to another jail. He was shot and killed by Jack Ruby, a local nightclub owner. Jack Ruby had ties to organized crime. The JFK administration, led by Attorney General Bobby Kennedy, JFK's younger brother, pushed hard to start shutting down organized crime. This led some people to believe the mob, the mob was involved in JFK's assassination. 